Hi guys, I know it's been a while since I've actually done an actual video uh, for my classic video game channel, but I'm back and I have some items to open and I uh, also, on top of this, I also need to upload my uh, super gun video. I know some people have written me and asked, you know, to show off the components of, the, of my super gun and show how the, how it connects and how it functions. Uh, really, it's it's relatively simple how it, a super gun functions. Uh, but we'll get into that with the other video. No need to discuss it further. Um, been out of the picture in terms of classic gaming and collecting for a while. Um, but I was able to pick up a few good deals on uh, eBay, or as some people would like to call it, Fleabay. And I also actually picked up something else that is um, pretty unique. And if you hear that noise, that's our pet rabbits having fun in their cage. Um, well, all right. Even though I haven't done this in a while, I have our scissors. I'm sure those who have those who have watched my earlier box openings know that I use a pair of scissors, blue-handled ones. I actually found them. They came up missing at one point. And we'll start with these two packages, like I said, from eBay. Um, for those that may not have seen my earlier videos, um, even though I'm, even though I'm a collector, I'm a gamer first. So, like a lot of gamers, I do like to find a deal. Um, I don't believe in beating a seller to death when they're offering a certain game or product at a certain price. I'll, if they are, if their auction or whatnot is, you know, has a make offer. I'll make an offer if they accept it, great. But I'm not the type that likes to beat on people because, you know, that's really not the best way to make friends. <laughs> or, you know, what I'm saying. So we'll start with this since I know what these are, and I do have a couple more coming in. I was actually hoping to wait for all four packages to arrive, but since I haven't done a video in a while, I figured, what the hell? Let's just do one at least. So this will be my thirtieth unboxing video. Yay! I'm going to start with this. This here, pretty thin envelope. Really, it's not an unboxing, right? Envelope, um, envelope opening, I suppose. This here, small item, as you can tell. Uh, it's for um, one of my favorite uh, portable handheld systems, and I own a few. And this game here is considered somewhat rare. I didn't pay much for it. I believe I spent about seven dollars, and uh, it's not complete, obviously. And I was really happy when I found it because I don't see it for sale on eBay very often. So when I saw it, I just bought it for seven dollars. That was actually the the buy it now price because I've seen box copies of this going for some pretty decent money. But think back, I mean, way back to the infancy of, of gaming, especially coin-up gaming. And think about some of the arcade games that really inspired even us as gamers that would eat up our quarters, you know. And this game here is, I wouldn't, well, I, based on what I read before buying it, it's not the best port, but considering it's actually uh, one of the more relevant ports, it's pretty close to the arcade. And I'm trying not to give it away because I know in the past I've given, I like to give hints, build up some anticipation. Um, but I know a couple times I've actually given it away too easily. So I guess we can just say that this involves robots. Lots of robots. And maybe that just gave it away right there. But I didn't say what system it was for. But there are there are only a few handhelds, or at least maybe just maybe there was only just one I can't remember that had this released on that specific platform. So this arrived relatively quick. Got her open, and of course I think this is my second box an opening where I've done it in the evening instead of the afternoon. All right, so it's really small. Robotron for the Atari Lynx. 
And I love the Atari Lynx handheld. It's a great system um, devised by Epic and a bunch of ex-Commodore Amiga uh, designers, engineers. Uh, they built the Atari Lynx handheld, and it's a great system. Um, I believe I did a, a, a box opening for the Atari Lynx about a year or so ago. And I've amassed quite a collection of games, but um, this one here I've been wanting for a long time, so I really look forward to playing this. So a Robotron, right there. Gotta like the goofy-looking character. Looks very cartoonish. So this is the first one. All right, set that one aside. Now this next one is not for a portable system. Okay, how can I say this without giving it away immediately? Um, the company that developed this game, also the game you know, began in the arcades, but we're not talking during the time of Robotron. We're talking during the time of the 16-bit era. And the game did eventually end up on a specific console. Um, I'm not going to say which one at first. And it eventually ended up on a, on a, at the time, next generation console. And it was considered one of the most popular games on this other next generation console at the time. Because the console, besides its first party support, the games were kind of iffy. And I think I might have given away what console I'm talking about, what <laughs> generations. And this one here was released. Um, I can't remember if it, if it was released during the time it came out for the the next generation of hardware that took the place of this system, or if this came out slightly before, I can't recall. It's been so long, I should have uh, double checked my, I should have done some additional research. But anyway, this is probably one of the, in my opinion, one of the best uh, games ever um, in terms of the specific genre it represents. Uh, because during the time that this was available in the arcade, you know, Mortal Kombat reigned supreme, you know, digitized graphics were the norm in a lot of games, but this used 3D rendered graphics, which was at the time considered to be the next evolution of gaming graphics. And the company that developed this is now, or has been in the past couple of years, been limited to developing cute party games. And I think that might have given in the way too of who the developer might you know, who the developer is. Now, finding a complete copy of this, um, the prices are just astronomical. Um, the seller said they would include the manual, but they didn't have the box. So I said, well, maybe I can find the box later. Again, the whole gamer first, collector second thing. So this arrived today as well. We're going to pop this bad boy open, being careful not to, well, if he included the manual, it's promised not to actually cut the book up. Because that's happened to me, not during a box opening, un uh, box unopening, but just in the past, a long time ago. And if I did cut the book, I am going to cry. And he included the book, and the book's in pretty bad shape. He said it wasn't in very good shape at all. But I'm not going to show the book right now. He said he included it. I really didn't care if he did. Um, the cartridge uh, itself... Cartridge, there you go. So you know what era I'm talking about. The cartridge here is in great shape, and it's Killer Instinct, uh, developed by Rare. We all remember Rare. They were known for some of the most innovative video games, especially during the 60 minute era. You know, I mean, Killer Instinct especially, you know, and then of course during the later generations like Nintendo 64, they had Conker's Bad Fur Day and quite a few other games that were just, I mean, the, just you know, Banjo-Kazooie, just some of the best games ever, you know, and then when they were basically... When they merged with Nintendo, they were basically the developers and the company was absorbed by Nintendo, I should say. And then they were basically turned into like um, a mediocre kind of, I, I hate to say it, you know, the shovelware type developer. Because 
a lot of the games they did release for the Wii were just a lot of party games. And gamers, even like myself, think that's a travesty because, you know, they're very talented. I mean, this is just one, I mean, this is just one example. And Nintendo really needs to, to free them from their chains and, and let them return to their former glory and start, this is what we need. Even on, I, mean, I know this is a classic channel, but I'm a gamer of all systems. And they need, and Rare needs to come back. They need to make a, a solid return. So we can start, so even the newer generation of gamers can start experiencing this. And though, yes, of course, you can buy a classic system and buy the software, the cartridges, the systems, whatever. But it would be nice to see them also using today's technology, too, as well. And I know I'm rambling, but I just wish Nintendo would, uh, you know. I hate to say it, release their clutches on them. So that's this. And, you know, I, I'm, I can't even begin to tell you how many quarters I used to, I used to pump into the coin up. I mean, uh, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of dollars are probably even better over time. You know, every chance I had, I was at the arcade, you know, if it wasn't more than combat, especially, you know, when this, Ended up in the arcade. I mean, I pretty much forgot about Mortal Kombat. But, all right, I have one last thing to show you, and then that will be it for this video. And then I have to uh, upload the other video. First, I have to obviously edit it because it's too long, even for YouTube standards, even though they've extended the, the, the file. I believe they extended not only the length, but the file size. I think you can upload different uh, for video formats too. They're pretty. They would restrict the user of the, of the certain formats they could use for videos. Now this one here, I, haven't, I just got recently. I haven't hooked it up. And primarily because I wanted to include it in this box opening. Mm, excuse me. Um, bought this from a local video game shop in town. And he gets all, they're called Final Stage Video Games. Um... I live in New Hampshire, so he is located on Route 4 in Chichester, New Hampshire. Um, he doesn't have a, an official website, um, but he has, you wouldn't believe he has everything from the Magnavox Odyssey up to even current game systems. Um, you know, we just visit Facebook and type in Final Stage Video Games. I don't know if he does mail order, but for some of you further out there, you know, if, you know, you know the Midwest, the, the West Coast, you know, or, or even elsewhere in the world, um, go to his Facebook page, type in Final Stage Video Games. I believe he's the, I don't think you'll find any other type of matches. He's the, um, I would say, the best classic gaming store in the area here. The other ones are further south, and they're a little too expensive. His prices are very realistic. They're very realistic. I mean, he even has Neo Geo MBS games for about thirty, forty dollars when they're selling for almost a hundred or better on eBay. And he keeps track. He has an iPad, or not an iPad, but he hates Apple. But he has a, I don't know if it's a Galaxy or, or some type of a, you know, third-party um, touch tablet. And he keeps track of prices. And he does his prices are phenomenal. Um, but this here, um, as we know. Especially back in the day, you know, when it came to copyright infringement, there really wasn't any law in place to stop third-party manufacturers from releasing, like, clones of systems. Well, this here is a, a Japanese Famicom clone. Only paid about $25 for it, called the Family Boy. It um, plays pretty much, it does play all Japanese uh, Famicom, 8-bit Famicom games. Um, it will also play uh, uh, US and even PAL 8-bit Famicom ga uh, uh, NES games. Sorry. Uh, however, in, in, in with this case here, obviously 8-bit Nintendo games will not fit through the plastic groove cutout. But you can buy an adapter, a pass-through. You can even modify the case, which I think I might do. Or you know, there really isn't much to it, and you can pop the case off, but the games do work. I've tried it. And, you know, got some controllers with it, and also comes with something called the Power Joy. Um, supposedly like 64 
games. You know, I believe it has Super Mario, Super Mario 2. So, obviously not licensed by Nintendo, but, you know, back in the day, you know, when it came, like I said, when it came to copyrights, you know, it was kind of a, a very thin line. So, companies like this one was able to get away with quite a bit. Um, this is still, and even now, I think this is just still fairly, I mean, this isn't that old. I mean, it's fairly recent. And the controllers look more like, um, I don't know, they're not obvious. They're like more like a, a joy pad than like the square box Ape NES uh, controllers. But hey, you know. And I did pick up an NES game a little while ago that I never showed off. And um, can't wait to play it. In fact, once I modify the case, I will play it. I forgot I, I didn't buy this from Final Stage Video Games, but um, I, I did pick it up elsewhere. Um, last year, actually, I just don't don't remember where it's called. It's for the Ape NES. It's uh, I can't see here. Night. Uh, it's called King's Night. I have a couple others too. They're really nice. But cart's in great shape. No box or anything. That's okay. So, but that's it, guys. That's all I have for now. And oh yeah, of course it comes with all the cables and it comes with AV audio, audio video cables. But that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back soon. With that MVS video, I know some of you have been wondering where the hell I've been. Well, you know, it's been uh, the end of 2012 was, you know, eh. And, you know, just wasn't able to uh, do videos like I wanted and haven't really, I, in fact, I haven't really bought anything for my, for my classic systems in a while. And, and actually, these are like the first things I've bought in quite a while. So, all right, guys, you have yourselves a, a great day, great evening, in fact, in this case, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Game on, guys.